In this short lesson, we will discuss several different types of altitude, including their definitions and when each are used throughout your flight. So let's get started. We often hear terms such as elevation and sea level. In aviation, we have many different types of altitude, each playing an important role in our flight. Depending on where we are flying and how high we are flying, we must use these altitudes to ensure safety of flight. Through this lesson, we will discuss indicated altitude, true altitude, absolute altitude, pressure altitude, density altitude, mean sea level, flight level, and above ground level. For most of our altitudes, we need some sort of starting point or reference. Since the altitude readings can be affected by weather, we must set both a standard for pressure and temperature. The standard is referred to as standard pressure or standard day. When the pressure reading is 29.92 inches of mercury and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, we have our standard. Anything below or above is non-standard and requires us to make adjustments. For every inch of pressure gained, for example, 30.92 would be 1 inch gained and our indicated altitude would decrease by 1,000 feet. Vice versa, for every inch of pressure loss, you will gain 1,000 feet of altitude. With temperature, your airplane will indicate that you are higher than you actually are in hot weather and lower with cold. So remember, a standard day is 29.92 and 15 degrees Celsius. The first type of altitude we are going to discuss is indicated altitude. This is the most frequently used type of altitude as you read this directly off your altimeter in the cockpit. On the left we have the G1000's tape version of altitude, and on the right we have the analog gauge version of altitude. Indicated altitude is the reading on your altimeter when it is set to the local barometric pressure setting. If you look close on these two examples, you will see on the left image at the bottom and in the window on the right image 29.92. This number is the pressure setting. As we transverse through different airspace, air traffic control will continuously update us on local pressure settings. We ensure this number matches on our gauge. When the correct pressure is set on our gauge, not only are we reading the indicated altitude, but we are also reading the true altitude. Next we have mean sea level, or MSL, and true altitude. To understand true, we need to understand what MSL is. We are familiar with sea level, but what is MSL? MSL is the height in reference to the sea level instead of the ground below us. Sound confusing? Hang tight and I promise I'll clear this up. True altitude is the height above sea level and is your indicated altitude when corrected for non-standard temperature and pressure. So MSL is the height above the ocean and true altitude is the height above the ocean when corrected for non-standard temperatures and pressure. Remember, true altitude is your indicated altitude when it is corrected for non-standard temperature and pressure. When we are flying, we know that our altimeter tells us what our indicated altitude is or what the true altitude is when set with the proper pressure setting. But when we are creating our flight plans, we could be crossing terrain such as mountains. When flying over mountains, you need to be at least 2,000 feet above them for safety reasons. For this, we would need to know the distance from the highest point to our plane. For example, if we are planning a flight and our, we have selected a cruising altitude of 6,500, but a mountain's peak we fly over would be at 6,000 feet, that only leaves us 500 feet between our plane and the peak of the mountain. Using this data, we would need to increase our cruising altitude to ensure that we cross the peak with at least 2,000 feet between us and the mountain. This is where absolute altitude and above ground level come into play. Altimeters come in many different varieties. Here you will see a traditional altimeter. Before we take off and throughout our flight, air traffic control will give us the current pressure setting. We need to ensure that this pressure setting is correctly displayed for the altimeter so that our indicated altitude is correct. Pressure altitude is the height above a standard datum plane. Sounds confusing, so let's use an example. 
If we're in our plane, sitting on the ground at an airport whose elevation is 500 feet above sea level, we want our gauge to indicate that we are currently at 500 feet. So if the pressure is set to 29.92 and our altitude indicates that we are at 1,500 feet, we know from earlier that our pressure must be lower. We can listen to air traffic control for the current pressure or if ATC does not have it, we can turn the knob until our indicated altitude reads 500 feet. For this example, if we turn the knob to change the pressure setting to 28.92, we would lose 1,000 feet and our altimeter would read the airport's elevation of 500 feet. Now that we have corrected our indicated altitude and we know that we had to change the altitude by 1,000 feet, our pressure altitude is 1,000 feet. 500 feet. We take the change of 1,000, add it to the elevation of 500 feet, and we come up with 1,500 for a pressure altitude. Now that we have our pressure altitude, we need to compute our density altitude. Density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. Remember, we learned that standard temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. But why is density altitude important? Airplanes like dense air or where the air molecules are closer together. As altitude increases, the air becomes less dense and therefore our plane's performance starts to drop. On hot summer days, our density altitude will be much higher than our actual or indicated altitude. With smaller planes, the max altitude they can climb to could be very low compared to commercial jets. When we flight plan, we need to ensure that our plane can get to the indicated altitude we need for safety of flight. Let's take a look at the chart here. Say our plane can climb to 15,000 feet. Now find the 15,000 foot line going diagonal across the screen shown by the red arrow. Follow that line to the far left. Now locate the temperatures of negative 30 and positive 30 degrees Celsius. Find where the 15,000 foot crosses both of those temperatures. We can see that with colder temperatures, we can climb higher than with hotter temperatures. So when air traffic control says the density altitude is 3,000 feet at an airport, and the airport's elevation is 500 feet, our plane is going to perform on takeoff as if we were at 3,000 feet. The three basic altitudes are mean sea level, MSL, flight level, abbreviated FL, and above ground level, or AGL. We covered both MSL and AGL earlier. MSL is the height above mean sea level, and AGL is the actual height above the ground. But if you've ever listened to air traffic control, you might hear flight level. When higher power planes reach 18,000 feet MSL or 18,000 feet indicated altitude, pilots will change their pressure to standard on their gauge regardless of what the actual pressure setting is. This means that no matter where you are in the world, an airplane flying at 18,000 feet or above will have the same pressure setting. But why would they need to do this? Above 18,000 feet, planes are flying at a relatively high speed in cruise flight. As we fly along, the pressure is constantly changing, requiring us to climb or descend. To prevent these high-speed planes from needing to go up and down during cruise flight and possibly hitting another plane, we set standard pressure for the entire cruise flight. Since the pressure isn't set to the actual pressure above 18,000 feet, we read altitudes as flight level, since 18,000 feet is the same level anywhere in the world for planes. When we read numbers to air traffic control, we must say each number separately to avoid confusion. For example, if we wanted to say we are currently flying at 2,500 feet, we would say we are flying at 2,500 feet. So instead of having to tell ATC we are currently flying at 25,500 feet, we shorten this to flight level 255. All right, think you got it? Let's find out. Our most commonly used altitude while flying is indicated. 
This altitude is read directly from your altimeter. We just need to ensure that we have the proper pressure setting. True altitude is the height above sea level. Absolute altitude is the height above terrain. Pressure altitude is the height above or below the standard datum plane, which we remember that standard is 29.92. Density altitude is the pressure altitude, also corrected for non-standard temperature, which we remember is 15 degrees Celsius. MSL, or mean sea level, this is your true altitude. Flight level are the altitudes above 18,000 feet, and AGL is above ground level, and this is what your absolute altitude is. That's it. You're done. We learned all the basic altitudes you need to fly safely. I hope you learned a thing or two, and good luck in your adventures on becoming a pilot. I recommend that you watch our next video on airspace to see how these altitudes are used while flight planning and traversing through airspace.